All right, let's take a look at homework corrections for number 54. Make sure you are marking your paper as to which ones you are getting right and which ones you are getting wrong, and then make sure you are fixing the incorrect ones. That's the best way for you to learn during this virtual homework correction. All right, number one, it says Lacey and Jake each have a pair of skates with four wheels on each skate. How many wheels do they have all together? All right, so if we look at, let's pretend this is Lacey's skate number one, one, two, three, four, but it has, they each have a pair. So a pair are two. I gotta make these look more like skates, there we go. All right, so this is Lacey's, and then this is gonna be Jake's. Jake's are a little rough looking, sorry Jake. So each one has eight wheels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Lacey has eight and Jake has eight. The question is how many wheels do they have all together? So eight plus eight makes 16. The answer is 16 wheels all together. All right, let's move on to number two. So we have a three digit by a two digit. And if you look at the numbers or the digits in the multiplier, we have two digits in the multiplier, which tells me there's going to be two partial products. So if you do not have two partial products, you did something wrong along the way. So let's start with six times five. 6 times 5 is 30, so I'm going to put my 0 down and carry my 3, and then I have 5 times 2 is 10, plus 3 is 13, carry the 1, 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 more is 6, my first, par first partial product is 630, now I'm done with the 5 and all that goes with it, mark it with a zero. Five times six, we already did that over here, is 30. Put down the zero, carry the three. Five times two is 10, plus three is 13. Carry the one, five times one is five, plus one more is six. So my second partial product is 6,300, which makes sense because my multipliers are the same digit. So I see a connection between this partial product and this partial product. That makes sense. Okay, so now I have to add my partial products. And I get 6,930. 6,930. All right, number three says 210 divided by 14. On my multiplication chart, I don't have a factor of 14, so I'll need to do some of that work on my own. So I'm first going to be looking at how many 14s are in 21. Well, that's easy. I think it's one, but let me double check and do some trial and error over here. Yeah, two 14s is 28, so that's too many. So 1 times 14 is 14. The difference, I'm going to start with 14 in my head and count up to 21. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. The difference is 7. And now I have to bring down the 0. And I'm going to start all over and ask myself how many 14s are in 70. Again, I don't know for sure, but I'm going to jump and go 14 times 5. Oh, exactly, 70. So I put a 5 up here. 5 times 14 is 70. The difference is 0, and my answer is 15. Now, I need to check that just to be safe. So I'm going to take, I'm going to cross all of this off. Whoops. Whoopsies. 
I'm sorry you guys. I'm not going to cross all of that off. I'm just going to come over here and do 15 times 14. So I take my quotient times my divisor and I should get 210. I just want to make sure. 4, 5, 6. Okay, and I do. So that checks out, telling me that 15 is the correct answer. Now let's move to number 4. <laughs> but it says number 2. What have I done here, you guys? Let me double check. This is 54. Yeah, this is number 4. I just have it labeled wrong. Sorry about that. Okay, so number four, let's make that correct. Josh has 12 computer games. He received one fourth of them for his birthday. How many computer games did he receive for his birthday? All right, so I'm gonna draw 12 computer games and for me, they're just gonna be these little squares. Okay, so there's 12. He received one fourth of them. So I'm going to break them into groups of four. So here's one group one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths. So one fourth of them would be three games. So I'm going to write that down and I'm going to double check something. I'm going to take that he has 12 games. One fourth of them, of in math and ease means to multiply, and I'm going to multiply it by one fourth. Now if you remember a while ago um, on one of our homeworks we talked about just putting a one underneath a whole number to make it into a fraction. And from what we know about that, that means 12 divided by 1, which is a whole 12. So it's the same number or it's an equivalent fraction. Now when you multiply fractions, and this is something we're getting to, we're going to go straight across. So 12 times 1 is 12 and 4 times 1 is 4. Now from what we've been learning, we know that this means 12 divided by 4. And 12 divided by 4 is 3. So we were right in our guess with 3 games. Okay, and we'll be working on multiplying fractions and whole numbers in the coming weeks. So 3 games is the correct answer. Number 5, we have adding 4 digit numbers. I'm going to round and estimate. So I'm going to go to my largest place value, which is a 5. Check the neighbor to the right. Is it five or higher? No. So the five stays the same and the rest becomes zeros. Same thing here. Check the neighbor to the right. Is it five or higher? Yes. So the three goes up and the rest become zeros. So I'm estimating my answer to be right about 9,000. So let's go ahead and add. Eight plus five is 13. Carry the one. 4 plus 2 is 6, 9 plus 3 is 12, carry the 1, 5 plus 3 is 8, plus 1 more is 9. So is 9,263 pretty close to 9,000? Yes, it is. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is my final answer. Number 6. All right, we are looking at 1 and 2 tenths plus two and three tenths. I don't like to add these horizontally, so I'm going to go ahead and change it and make sure that my decimal points are lined up. Now I can add and I get three and five tenths. Now, because we are working in fractions, I want to show you something. One and two tenths, one and two tenths. That is exactly the same as this decimal number. 
And then I have 2 and 3 tenths. That's exactly the same as this decimal number. So I can add my whole numbers and I get 3. And then I have 2 tenths plus 3 tenths. In order to add, subtract, or compare fractions, I must have the same denominator. In this case, I do. So I just have to add my numerators, and I get 5 tenths, which is exactly the same as this decimal number. So now you can see where decimals and fractions are the same value. They're just written differently. So my answer is 3 and 5 tenths, or 3 and 5 tenths. Either one will count. Number 7 says 97 is an odd number. 97. Now, in the rules of divisibility, 7 cannot be divided evenly by 2, because there will be a remainder. So I just need to look at that number in the ones place in order to tell you that 97 is odd because of the 7. But I can prove it to you as well. I can take 97 and I can divide it by 2. If it divides up evenly, it's an even number. If there's a remainder, it's an odd number. So this goes in 4 times. And 2 goes into 17 8 times with a remainder of 1. So because there is a remainder, it is an odd number. So that is true. Number 8. Okay, we have a little reminder over here. In order to add, subtract, or compare fractions, you must have the same denominator. In this case, we do. It's a 3, so I know that my denominator and my answer is also going to be a 3. I just need to add my numerators. 1 plus 1 is 2. And if I add these up, here's 1 third plus another third. And then if I color both of those over here, you can see that 1 third plus 1 third equals 2 thirds. For question number 9 and 10, write the value of the underlined digit. Now, we just did this uh, in number 6, so I want to do the same thing here. We have a 6 as a whole number, and this says 3 tenths. So that decimal is equivalent to the fraction 3 tenths. The value is 3 tenths. Number 10, we have a whole number of 5, and we have 45 hundredths. So the value of the 5 is 5 hundredths. Okay? And I have not forgotten the clues. I'm doing something a little different today. All right, number one says correct these sentences. Do you want mustard, onions, pickles, or cheese on your hot dog? All right, so we don't have any indication that someone is saying something. This is just a regular old question. I'm going to go ahead and put the question mark at the end so I don't forget. We have to capitalize the beginning. Do you want mustard, onions, pickles, or cheese? This is a list, and I know that lists need to be separated by commas. And I think that's it. So now I'm going to rewrite. Do you want mustard, comma, onions, pickles, or cheese on your hot dog. I would
would say, no, I don't want all of that. I just want ketchup and mustard because that is what I like on my hot dog. All right, bye-bye, hot dog. And now we're talking pizza. Whew. This one has a lot of homophones. Well, two homophones in it. Homophones are words that sound like another word. They sound exactly like another word. They're spelled differently and have a different meaning. So it says, this piece of pizza is too hot to eat. I would say when I'm talking about something being too hot, I'm going to put an exclamation at the end because I'm usually saying it with expression. And then we need a capital T. This kind of piece is like give peace a chance. We want just one piece. That's spelled P-I-E-C-E. -E. This piece of pizza is too hot to eat. Okay, you guys know we have the word two, two, and two. Those are all homophones. This two is the number two. I'm not talking anything about the number two up top. So I know I'm not going to need this one. This means in excess, meaning more than I need. Okay? So this piece of pizza is too hot to eat. Now I can rewrite. This piece of pizza is too hot to eat. Exclamation mark. All right. Moving on to number three, context clues. You guys should know by now that context clues are the words around a new word that you use to figure out the meaning of it. So number three says, Brendan's mother took him to the dermatologist when he developed a strange rash. So this word of strange rash means something on your skin. So why would she go to a dermatologist? Well, it means that a dermatologist is someone who studies the skin. And in our case, a dermatologist is a doctor that deals with skin issues. So, ologist means someone who studies. Derm is a Latin root that means skin. So, someone who studies the skin. And usually those are doctors in our case. So, a doctor of the skin. Number four, write two words that rhyme with the word rough. Rhyme means the ending sounds the same. So, like cat, hat, fat, bat. Those are all rhyming words. So with the word rough, the end sounds like this, uff. So I might take this spelling or this spelling because the sound is the same. So I could say rough, buff, cuff, enough, okay, and I'm sure there are other words. I'm just going to put two different spellings, buff and enough, because in English these two sound the same. All right, next, fiction or nonfiction. Every year on St. Patrick's Day, Leprechauns dance in the moonlight at midnight. Okay, I'll do this in green. Fiction, I always remember that F means fake, make believe, not true. 
nonfiction means not fake or true. Okay? And in this case, leprechauns dancing around is just a myth. It is fiction. It's fake. Make believe. You can ask anyone in Ireland and they don't see leprechauns dancing around. Okay. Your clues. First, I want you to take a picture of front and back and put it up here. Uh, so that I can give you credit for your homework number 54. Your clues are the two types of food that were listed in homework 54. So somewhere on your homework there were two types of food and I put two pictures on your homework. Okay, and then your third clue, so this is one, this is two, this is three, is I want you to put a star next to the one that you prefer. So do you prefer this one or this one? Put a star next to it. So you should have two foods and a star. Alright, that is it. We'll see you back in Zoom. Thank you.